family and friends and fellow YouTubers, it's Kim here from Kim's Country Corner and I am still out at the Hancock Homestead in the kitchen uh, working on preserving our corn from this season. And uh, we just finished canning quarts of corn in the pressure cooker, uh, the pressure canner back here. And now we have a little bit of corn left over. Um, so we are going to freeze the rest of it. And I thought I would take you through the steps on how to freeze corn. It's actually pretty simple. Now, the corn you have to prepare the same way for freezing that you do for canning. Okay, so my method is to uh, lightly cook the corn for about two minutes and then take the corn cob, dunk it into cold water to stop the cooking process and then bring it over and slice the kernels off the cob. Okay, so it's prepared the same way. I'm not going to go through all the steps again, but if you want to see it actually being done, then please watch my canning video because um, it's prepared the same way. But we have this leftover corn here, so I'm going to freeze the rest of it. And I'm going to use what's considered the straw method of doing it. And uh, to do this, you are going to need some freezer bags. Now you can buy freezer bags in pints or gallons, so I'm going to be using the gallon bags. And um, I actually prefer to use the gallon bags uh, because they do hold a little bit more um, and you don't have to fill the bag all the way up. Uh, you'll see the method I use does not require that the bag is all the way full. Alright, so we're going to go ahead and we're going to open up our bag and we're going to spoon in um, as much corn as we want this bag to hold, okay? And I usually do about halfway. Doesn't have to be exact, of course. Okay, just whatever you think a good serving size would be. All right, so I'm going to leave it at that. Okay, it's about half full. And then I'm going to seal it all the way up until the just the corner. The corner I'm going to leave open because that's where I'm going to stick my straw. Okay, so I'm going to stick a straw down here in this open corner. I'm going to close as far up as to where the straw is at. Okay, push out as much air as I can. And then, to secure it even more, you're going to stick it down into a pan of water. Now, I'm just using my roaster pan. I rinsed it out and put fresh water in there. But I'm going to take my bag and I'm going to stick it down into that water, making sure I don't get water inside. You can see that the bag is still sticking up here, the straw is still sticking up. And I'm going to continue to just squeeze the air out and the water is going to help me do that. Okay? The water will form itself around that corn and it will push the air out of the bag, okay? It's, the water is on the outside of the bag, pushing up against the corn, sealing itself around the corn, all right? So you just continue to push the air out, and then when you think you have most of the air out, you take the bag out, and as you can see, it pretty well sealed around that corn there. Okay, and then you just take the straw out and press out any additional air that you might see or feel. And then you just seal that right on up. And there you have a bag of corn ready for the freezer. Okay? Alright, we'll do that again. So I'm taking out my freezer bag. Filling it up with a good amount of corn. And 
And you know, once you open the bag of corn, you know, you don't have to eat it all in one setting. You can have it for a couple of meals, a couple of three meals, as long as you keep it refrigerated. All right. So there we go, about half a bag there. I'm going to seal that all the way down to the corner. I'm going to stick in my straw, continue to seal up to the straw, push out as much air as I can. Then I'm going to put it into my tub of water. And then I'm going to use the water's help to squeeze out even more air, making sure I don't get water inside. That's why you really don't want to fill the bag all the way up if you're using this method because you do not want water inside. Um, you're, you're squeezing the air out using the water on the outside. Then when you think you have as much of the air out as you can get, you take that bag out and you'll see this one even did better. It seals itself right around that corn. Then you just Remove that straw and seal it the rest of the way up. And you have another bag ready for the freezer. Alright, that's a much simpler method and a cheaper method than buying those, um, you know, freezer ma machines that does that for you. Which, I mean, if you've got the money and you can afford those, that's fine, but, you know, this works well. So I'm going to keep doing that and whenever I get finished, I'll bring you back and we'll see how many bags I ended up with. Alright, I'll be back. There are quart sized bags, they're halfway full and I ended up with four of those, alright, for the freezer. Now I want to show you one more way, um, I don't do this very often. But it is a way to preserve your corn. So you blanch your corn just as though you were going to can it or freeze it, but you leave it on the cob. Okay? It does have to be blanched though. That means it's cooked in boiling water for about two minutes and then it's dipped into cold water very quickly to stop the cooking process. So it's just lightly cooked. And then you want to make sure that the corn is dry. And you might even want to leave it air dried. Okay, so that's what I've done. Mine are air dried. I'm just double checking. They look pretty good. You want it dry so that um, water crystals don't form because if the water crystals form, it will soften the corn and make it kind of mushy. Now these ones on the bottom are a little bit wet. I guess I didn't get my pan all the way dry. Okay, so let me get this out of the way. Okay, just to be on the safe side, I'm going to roll these up in napkin so I can make sure they're completely dry. Whoops. I guess that's one that won't be going into the freezer. Okay. We do not want mushy corn, so we do not want those ice crystals to form. So I'm just going to go ahead and leave this one out. We'll cook that one later. I have some other ears I want to cook. Okay, then you take, <clears throat> after you have your corn, then after you have your corn lightly cooked on the cob and you have it completely dry, then you need to go through and clean wrap each one of them. Individually wrap each corn cob. Okay? This, this is really nice to have on hand 
for those meals that you want to cook outside on the grill and you want to grill corn and you want to you know a corn that's ready to be grilled um, this is nice for that I usually try to make sure I have eight in a bag um, you know like if you're having company you know you'll usually have you know six to eight people a lot of times or if it's just John and I then you know that's like two meals because I'll usually eat one or two and he'll eat like four <laughs> so you know we can get a couple of meals out of it So then after you have those wrapped and uh, clean wrap, then you get out your freezer bag again. And you put them into the freezer bag. Now if your corn is um, long, you may want to cut off the ends or cut it in half uh, to make it slide down into your freezer bag easier. Um, I'm doing this at the end, so we have smaller ears here. All right, so there are my eight ears in my bag. And then once again, I'm going to use that straw method because I want this to be airtight, as airtight as you can get it. I mean, I don't know. I've never had much luck getting all the air out of corn cobs as I have the rest of it, but. All right, so push, push it down in the water and let the water help you seal around those corn cobs. You might have to give it a few minutes <clears throat> because this will have a little bit more air in it. Once again, do not get water inside your bag. All right, let's see, it didn't want to seal completely. It does help, but um, I don't know, I, I always end up with a little bit of air. All right. So, pull that straw out, squeeze out as much air as you can, and then you have corn cobs ready to go into your freezer too. All right, so, I'm showing you three methods now of preserving corn. All right, so now we have three methods of preserving corn. You can can the corn, you can freeze the corn kernels, or you can freeze the corn cobs. Okay, so um, okay, so I hope that this will encourage you to grow your own sweet corn and to preserve your own sweet corn because then that way you have summer goodness throughout the whole winter and um, you know until it's time to start eating it fresh again. And it's just really nice to have it on stock. Um, I know, especially during the holidays like Thanksgiving and Christmas, we love enjoying that summer goodness uh, from our own garden. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, could you please give me a thumbs up? And uh, if you want to know more about what's going on in my corner of the world, hit that subscribe button to Kilns Country Corner. And I appreciate all of your attention, and I will talk to you all later. Bye for now. Okay, family and friends, so this is a postscript to my video. As I was putting away the bags of corn into the freezer, I remembered and saw that I had put some corn cobs up there that I had already sliced the kernels off of. And you might be thinking, why would she be saving corn cobs? Well, that's because I want to make corn cob jelly. I have not made corn cob jelly before, but I saw it on the internet and I read about it and they say it tastes just like honey. So I'm going to try making corn cob jelly sometime this fall. So you'll have to stay tuned to my channel 
and find out whenever I do this. But as you're preserving your corn, you need to, to save some of your save some of your corn cobs. Um, now, from what I read, you need about 15 uh, cobs per batch of jelly, and I'm only going to do two batches, so I saved around 30, 35 corn cobs for my jelly. So, um, so yeah, don't forget to save some corn cobs for that jelly. All right, now I'll talk to you later. Bye.